Deep in the heart of the jungle, countless conquistadors risked their lives in search of a famed city of gold, where infinite riches awaited whatever brave explorer willingly risked their lives in search of legendary treasure. Only this time, it was all real. Hi everyone, join me in today's video about the real life civilization that sparked the story of the famous El Dorado, a city that has become mythologized into literature, film, and television that turned out to be everything people thought it was, and so much more. So grab your lucky machete and most trusted mosquito spray as we hack our way through the dense jungle of history to learn more about the civilization behind the myth of El Dorado, the Muisca of modern-day Colombia. The modern myth of El Dorado stems from the Muisca people of modern-day Colombia, deep in the mountainous jungles of a 13,000-year-old site known as El Abra. The residents of El Abra had a steep climb, get it, because they lived in the mountains, towards becoming the stuff of legends, however. Between 1000 BCE and 500 CE, the residents of the area transitioned from subsistence practices like hunting and gathering to embrace agriculture. This may be thanks to a mass migration that drove a large number of people into the Colombian highlands, who may have brought their agrarian practices with them. The Muisca emerged as the cultural trendsetters of the area. Although the Muisca were not the only residents of the Colombian highlands, their culture set the standards for the region in terms of language and material goods. But that wasn't always welcome. Just before the arrival of the Spanish, the Muisca faced pretty intense conflict. Between 1470 and 1490, the Muisca of the north fought an intense series of wars to maintain control of the region against groups like the Sutagao and the Panche, and the Kalinago, residents of the Lesser Antilles and parts of northern South America, constantly battled the Muisca for control of important waterways used as commercial highways. Conflict and control gave leaders of the Muisca immeasurable wealth, especially in gold. And one king in particular became so famous for his personal wealth that his city became a settlement rumored to hold infinite gold, sparking a loot lust among the Spanish learning about El Dorado. When the Spanish arrived, they used the internal fighting between groups of the region to their advantage and encouraged the violence to escalate. The Spanish defeated the splintered Muisca, took their lands and wealth, and founded a colony over the remains. Speaking of conflict and conquest, the Muisca were a loosely united confederation of communities that often fought among themselves for control of the whole region, with two main factions developing, the Zake and the Zipa. Organization of these groups had a head priest to lead the people spiritually, known as the Iraka and a high chief to lead them politically, known as the cacique. Each individual community had their own leader, known as a capitan. All Spanish terms, by the way. Further divided, sibids, or high captains, and utas, or low captains. Only iracas could create new laws, but those laws had to respect pre-existing cultural norms, and natural resources like wood or water had to remain free for all residents to use. In order to maintain law and records, the Muisca depended on a complex system of hieroglyphics. This included a complex number system that resembles squiggled lines more than easily recognizable symbols for numbers. The Muisca's cultural dominance over their region, however, put them at the center of an important trade route connecting the Andes to the Caribbean and their language became the language for trade. It's no surprise then that many Muisca words live on in the modern day in Colombia today, 
including in place names, agricultural products, and in the names of some Colombians today. Natural resources may have been deemed public goods, but that doesn't mean the Muisca didn't turn their natural resources into wealth. Products like emeralds, copper, coal, and salt served as powerful exports to nearby cultures in exchange for gold. Muisca gold imports were so high that gold quickly became the main material for artists to use in handcrafts. Gold was also the most common item offered in sacrifice to the goddess Guatavita, contributing to the mythology of El Dorado. Internal commerce typically revolved around agricultural products such as yuca, coca, and potatoes. Gold didn't define Muisca culture, though. The Muisca played sports, with wrestling being among the more popular. Muisca religion also played a major role in daily life, and included the use of human sacrifices. Important gods included Sue, the sun god, Chia, the moon goddess, and the folk hero Pochica. The Muisca would blend astronomy with spirituality to create an astrological system associating certain times of the year with symbolic meanings. The summer solstice was an especially important holiday, as it celebrated their most important god, Sue. Gold definitely made the Muisca famous, however. In religious ceremonies for Guatavita, Muisca kings and priests would cover themselves in gold dust, then wash it away in important waterways. The practice was famous throughout the region, even in parts of the Caribbean. Indigenous groups outside of modern-day Colombia would use this as a way to get Spaniards out of their villages. Spanish conquistadors obsessed with gold would stop whatever they were doing, murdering and pledging, to chase the too-good-to-be-true legend in search of El Dorado. Only about 14,000 Muisca are still alive today, a shadow of their former legendary past. There is hope, however, as many Muisca today have reintroduced pre-colonial practices back into their lives including the consumption of pre-colonial foods like yucca and quinoa, and fighting to protect important waterways. The legendary treasures of El Dorado may be a thing of the past, but the wealth of history that continues throughout the stories of today's Muisca keeps the legends alive for future generations. Thanks for watching today's video, everyone. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more videos on anthropology. Also, let us know in the comments below what your favorite legendary civilization is.